Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. As you can probably see, I got a lot of steel cut up here. In hindsight, I should have just had it cut when I ordered it instead of me cutting it myself. Uh, me cutting it myself, I know it's all cut the way I want it, but at the same time, the time to do the cuts was probably more than it was worth. Uh, the uh, steel mill doesn't charge a lot extra to do the cut, so it would have been probably worth it to do that for as much as there was. But I cut everything in bundles so that it was a minimal amount of handling to do all this, but I still probably got you know, three or four hours and cutting all this steel up on the Johnson horizontal bandsaw. I didn't film any of that because, I mean, it's cutting steel on a bandsaw. I don't know if that's terribly exciting for anybody. Might be somebody out there that enjoys that, but uh, most people, it's not really about like watching paint dry. So, uh, I guess the next thing for me to do is to uh, start laying this out and see about doing some welding, I guess. Uh, there's essentially two cranes worth of steel here build them in pairs these will be two identical cranes so all the steel's cut other than i have to uh miter the fits to the ends and the bases so i think what i'm gonna do is uh, do a layout on the floor and I'll uh, mark it up square and then I can just lay the parts down on it and line them up and weld them out. So probably what's going to happen, but no guarantees. I got to see how this goes. Uh, really need more floor space for that. A lot of people talk about building welding tables, but I mean, for a job like this, it's 16 feet long and eight feet wide. It's a pretty big welding table. It would take a lot of space in my shop. And the uh, floor works just as well, so. And I can pull stuff onto the floor later on. And it's difficult to do with a table. So that's why I work on the floor, because there's limited space. Can't all have 100,000 square foot shops to work out of. So let's uh, get to it. I don't know what they used to cut this with at the factory, but it's uh, at least an eighth of an inch off. But, it's okay, it's still on well. Well, I made a central location mark here. Hopefully you can see. And I have measured from the corners. And 78 and a quarter off that corner. So maybe a quarter off that corner plus just a little bit. So I'll start welding on this side.
So that's how I transcribe the angle on there. So about it up here, come up here to the top, do the same thing. I'm at the bottom of my web. So square. Be right there. Okay, so perhaps you can see what I'm doing here. I'm using the first one as a pattern to build all the rest of them. I altered my design somewhat on these cranes to make it all the same thickness material. And by doing that, it allows me to do this. So I can weld up all the bottoms using a template, basically. Just have to get the first one square and then the rest I can just line up. I can clamp to the one underneath if I have to to hold something, keep it from pulling. And I'll just have to weld on the tops once I get all that done. So I have to rotate these all around anyway. Uh, my pro tip I guess would be to, uh, of course cut your angle as close as you can, but if you have to uh, leave it minus material on your inside edge that way you can always fill it with weld easier than you can go back and have to cut it back off so the plasma cutter has been used to cut up all the pieces so everything's prepped all i gotta do is get it all lined up and weld it out so let me get this one tacked
Well, that's got the basics of all the feet done, so the next thing for me to do is to weld on the actual feet for the casters and drill the holes in them before I weld them on. Uh, and then uh, stick the tops on and I'll be ready to start rotating these things and finish welding them out. So, pick up the plasma stuff, move it out of the way, and uh, the grinder, I guess. And we should be ready to get started on that. I shouldn't need that stuff again for a while, so.